Today, I go over the major app, or not app, add-on, <laughs> and show you how it works. It's kind of a cool thing to use and helps to get really precise measurements and accurate models if you need to. And this is basically an example of kind of what it does, but I'll go over it in a little bit more detail. And stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Eventmark, and today I'm going to be showing you a program called Measure It, and it's actually a pretty cool program. It helps you do really precise things, and to install it, basically all you do is go to the Add-ons folder in your user preferences, and just type in Measure It. It's actually right there, but just type Measure It, and just check that and click Save Your User Settings. And it shows up over here on the Measure It tab here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And to use it, basically, there are several ways you can do select two different points. First, you might click Show and then hit Segment. And it shows the length of the object here. Right now, it's showing meters. You can actually go down here and change that to whatever size you want, basically inches, feet, millimeters, centimeters. And it shows you what that actual measurement is in millimeters. Blender units typically goes to meters, so but for 3D printing it goes across one blender unit, it's one basically one <laughs> millimeter. And I just said that it's automatic to keep it standard size there. And it works along any two points. You can measure any two points along anything. So you can measure the diagonal there. Measure that there. Hit all points. And it goes along all the different edges there and shows you everything. And it puts all of the points there. But we really don't need all of those. And you can select it by line as well. So just those three segment. And just add those. Change the color here. Let's go ahead and make them all different colors. Actually, let's make them color along the length of what they are. So, X, Y, and Z, so you can see that. And I'm just going to show an example of like a, a hole, for example, is kind of another tricky thing with Blender. And you can change the size to whatever you want there, or you can actually just change the size here. Actually, just make that 10 by 10 by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and add a cylinder here to make a hole. I always change the vertices up to at least 64 so that we have a... So the... Basically, it's not all blocky looking when you print something. And just size this up. Right here you can change the sizes here, so if you want to have this 5x5x10, five by five by it makes it similar to that size. But to do measurements across it, I'm going to go ahead and actually make the hole first. So I'm going to do a boolean. Oh, wrong one. Difference with the cylinder. Put that in there. Apply that. Then we can delete the cylinder. So now we have a hole, and how do we measure that? So, first thing you want to do is go in orth orthographic mo mode, press 5 on the button there, and go to vertex select mode, select those, make sure they're on the same plane there on the top part. And so now we know what size the hole is. So the hole is 5 millimeters across, and we need to change the size of the hole, we can just select all of these. Even if we wanted to make a conical shape, we just select all the edges along here and just size those up. We can have it be 9 millimeters, have this bottom part still 5 millimeters. We can measure that too by selecting those two points along the exact opposite of each other. 
I just hit segment, so we've got 9 millimeters at the top and 5 millimeters at the bottom. And if we need to know how long that needs to be there, we just measure that. So that's 2.83 millimeters along that edge. But it's only 2 millimeters thick, but we can see that the measurements are really helpful. And that blue is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to try to change that to something that's readable. Red seems to work pretty good. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> It's basically that's all the measure it really does for the main part that most people are going to use. It does other things too. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and show you kind of what it does as far as, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to, the uh, other options that it has. Let's make a 10 by 10 cube here. Go in and make a couple of loops along it. And say we want to have the edge here one millimeter and so what we do is the segment here let's change that and change the color this is the color for all the default ones I'm just going to change that so any new ones we make will be readable so you can size that up and size it along the Y and just make that one millimeter do the same thing for the other side here Select those two points. Select those. Do that, and then select these two. And so we have a one by one by one corner here. And it basically selects all three of them. And another option that this has is you can measure arcs and see how much of an arc that is from this point to this point through all three points. And that basically says how much of an angle it really is. Like here, you can see it measures that angle as a 4.9. That doesn't quite make sense. Not sure how exactly that works. We want to measure those two lines. Okay, so you have to have three points selected. Let's go over here for the angle. So it's only measuring that one. But the angle thing, I'm not sure why. measures it that way. Okay, so that is a 90 degree angle. That's not a 45 degree angle right here. That's a 90 degree angle, so I don't know what's going on with that. Actually, it's, whoop, it's like that. I'm not sure how the angle one works, really, to be honest with you. So that's showing both that angle and that angle. But it kind of works. It's kind of a beta program, so I really don't know how it exactly works. If you want to label something, the newest ones are in the bottom, so... You put a new label there, and it puts the label up there. And you can adjust certain things on here, like... Say we want to have this segment, add a new one. 
and instead of having it have lines like it does, I can change that to triangles at the end, or a T-shape. Hold on a sec here. There we go. <laughs> I was doing the other one. So I like triangles or T shape. T shape I think is the default one. No, it's just nothing. So that one just has line arrows and it's full colored in the arrows. T shape is the default one, I think. So, well, actually, no, it makes a plus at the end of it. So, yeah, but anyway, it measures out and shows that length there. You can change the line thickness to whatever you want. I don't know what this does, I've never really messed around with that. that says there automatic position oh that kind of makes it so that it jumps off of the line actually and where it's at and without it it doesn't quite work these I don't know don't know quite what this does It's just more different settings that I don't know what it does really. You can delete all the different things that are on there, so if you don't need them, you can just delete them. And the X, I don't know. Really what that does. I think it measures like a half of a length or something. Like measures all the segments. Like if you select those two, it just does like half of it. So if we select these outer two, I'll show the midpoint from the two. It basically selects that main line and cuts it in half. And the segment button does just between those two. So that's what that does. And if you go on faces mode, I think it will show the area. That yeah, shows the area of the object that you'd be using. This just changes the gen general size of everything. This is the size of the arrows on the end and this is the size of the text that will be displayed so made it really big and these should be all the same area size so these somehow are off by a slight bit when I measured the distance but it's still roughly pretty close Talking hundreds of millimeters there. <laughs> Some things will matter, but for most 3D printing, hundreds of a millimeter is not going to matter too much. This is the render option. You can actually go into the camera display mode, and when you render it, it will actually put these numbers in the final render, whatever render you do be it cycles or blender render or anything it'll put the color of the everything in the way that you have it like if you want to have a graphical display model of just what the different lines and everything do and just the dimensions kind of like a blueprint type model you can do that and make it render and it's pretty cool actually 
but it doesn't quite work that well. It's crashed my system a couple of times. That's why I'm not going to demonstrate it right now, but it does work if you mess around with it. I just haven't figured out what works best with it yet. But for the most part, it, everything seems to work pretty good. And you can change the color of the... Well, it looks like the planes for the area. What's really cool, we'll add on that most people don't know about, and it helps to make really precise measurements of things and get really good 3D prints. So I actually printed out a hard drive case for my laptop because the uh, laptop that I got from work was missing the hard drives and the hard drive cables and everything. I had to order new hard drive cables and things like that to get it to work. But the uh, it didn't come with any cases, and those were like 30 bucks, and I didn't want to spend 30 bucks on just a little piece of metal that I could 3D print a plastic part just the same. And I printed it out and the first print turned out fit perfect and didn't need to make any adjustments to anything for the size and fit around the hard drive exact because I took um, calipers and measured it and made the model in Blender and printed it out and printed just fine. But anyway that's pretty much it for today for this. I'm going to show how to use this and the next episode I'm going to make this kind of like a two-part tied together thing because there's a user on Thingiverse that had a question on the Blender group on how to make a specific object with precise measurements and I'll actually go ahead and do a video showing how to do that and everything for him specifically but it basically goes over how to apply the, the program to practical things and the, I'll show that in the next episode. But anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.